Region of interest analysis is the backbone of several more sophisticated fMRI analyses, such as functional connectivity analyses, psychophysiological interactions, and double dissociations. Now to show you an example of this, I'm going to use this toy brain here that I got as a party favor a few years ago. When we talk about drawing masks or ROIs, all we're doing is we are specifying a certain region of the brain that we want to focus on. So let's say I'm interested in the bilateral dorsolateral prefrontal cortex. Okay, so imagine that this pen is the tool I'm using in any fMRI package like AFNI, FSL, SPM, whatever. And I'm going to be drawing a dotted line around a region that I'm interested in analyzing. Okay, so this is the left dorsolateral prefrontal cortex right here, and I'm going to call that region of interest A. I'm going to label it with an A there. Hopefully you guys can see that. Now let's say I want to draw another region of interest on the opposite side of the brain, so the right dorsolateral prefrontal cortex. So I'm going to use this blue pen here to show that it's a different region of interest, and I'm going to call this one region of interest B, as in boy. Okay, so hopefully you guys can see that too. This is conceptually the same process you're doing when you create any region of interest. Now let's say that for regions A and B, what I'm interested in doing is I'm, I want to compare parameter estimates for different conditions or different contrasts. So let's say that one condition I exposed the subjects to was pictures of elephants. And another condition is pictures of tigers. And I want to see how do the parameter estimates differ between these two regions of interest. And I can pull that up here in one of these examples right here. So you can see this might be a sample bar chart for what the parameter estimates look like once you've averaged over all the parameter estimates in each region of interest. You can see here that there does appear to be a double dissociation with ROI A being more preferential for elephants and ROI B being more preferential for tigers. Of course, you need to do a pair t-test to directly compare the two. Furthermore, you can use region of interests to do things like functional connectivity. In other words, if you're interested in seeing whether the time series averaged across all the voxels in that region correlates significantly. You can see that here in this graph that I've created in RStudio. So if we zoom within it, you might see two time courses like this, and there would be some standard error associated with each observation. And then those two would be correlated, and you would see whether there is a significant correlation between those two regions or not. So that's how you do region of interest analysis conceptually. And it doesn't matter what tool you use, the underlying principles are the same. I hope this visualization has helped you understand it a little bit better. And of course, you can see the tutorials in AFNI, FSL, and SPM if you want to know how to do it in all three of those packages.